in the year 745 BC, the Assyrian Empire expanded from the great city of Nineveh and moved westward to the Mediterranean Sea and all the way south to the city of Jerusalem. Its king, Titlak Piazer, was a ruthless dictator. He demanded tributes from other nations in order to spare them devastation. The kings of Arab and Ephraim tried to persuade the king of Judah in Jerusalem, King Ahaz, to join them. When he refused, they conspired against him and threatened to invade Judah. King Ahaz looked to align with Egypt to fend off this threat, but desperately wanted to know and receive God's blessings. So he sought the counsel of the renowned prophet Isaiah. You wish to see me, your majesty. I know why. You are afraid. You don't know which way to turn. You are surrounded and feel as though you're out of options. You don't know what to do next. So you have asked to consult with me to receive the Lord's advice. But I'm here to tell you, it is you the Lord wishes to consult. He has something to tell you. Hold fast. Hold fast. Do not panic and react out of fear. Do not give up. Be of courage. You have more power than you realize. You are stronger than you think. You're not alone. Do you think... Those who threaten you threaten our God? Do you believe the mighty one is panicked by your problems? He is the doer of wonders. He knows what the king of Assyria says. He hears his taunts. He sees the dust clouds from his armies rise when they are approaching yet miles away. He feels the tremors in the earth of his thousands of chariots. He knows his boasts. And he knows what the kings of Aram and Ephraim have told you. That if you do not join them in paying tribute to the king of Assyria, then they will attack you. They will come for you first. He knows what they all say, but they do not know what the Lord God Almighty says. And that is what I've come to say to you. But first, I want you to tell me something. What do you dream? What visions in the night do you see when you lay your head upon the pillow? What are the thoughts of your imaginations when you go to sleep? What do you dream?
O king, it does not take the general conference of Levites this long to make a decision. The truth is, you don't dream, not anymore. You have only nightmares because your fears have gotten in the way of your dreaming. Your visions in the night are of your worst fears coming true because that's all you see. That's all you focus on. If you would but focus on our Lord, the one who says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. You might rediscover the possibility of dreaming again. My dreams began the year that your grandfather, King Uzziah, died. I was 18 years old. I dreamt I was in the temple of the Lord and I could see the train of his robe filling the temple. And there were seraphs flying above the throne saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of his glory and their voices were like thunder and the pillars of the temple shook. And I thought, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell among a people of unclean lips. To be unworthy and stand in the presence of God, that was my nightmare. Until a seraph flew to the altar and with a pair of tongs took a burning coal and flew and touched my lips with it. But it wasn't hot. It didn't sear. It was cool. And the angel said, your guilt is removed. Your sins are forgiven. And then I heard the voice of the Lord speak. Who will go for us? Who can I send who will be my messenger? And I cried, here am I, Lord, send me. I've been living the dream ever since. I've been declaring the visions that God puts in my head and on my heart. Even the ones that are hard to hear like seeing our fellow Israelites to the north carried away in chains to a land where they've never been to serve a people they have never known. All because they ignored God's ways. We cannot ignore God's justice and expect God to do the same. We can't let widows and children sleep homeless in the street while we lie upon beds of ease and comfort. We cannot ask for God's power and disregard his pattern for living. We can't ask for God's help and not ask what is his will. So trouble has come to our brothers and sisters to the north because they wouldn't change their ways. It doesn't have to be that way. Our way can change. Things can be different. We worship a God who specializes in making things different, who says, do not dwell on the former things. Look, I'm doing a new thing if we will but believe. What do you believe? Do you believe God can change your ways? Do you believe God can change you? He stands ready. 
he is ever so willing. He says, give me a sign and I will show you what I will do for you. But you refuse. You refuse to ask for a sign. You say, no, I I shall not put the Lord God to the test by demanding a sign. But Ahaz, he sees through your false piety. He knows. You won't ask for a sign because you've already chosen your course. You've already made up your mind. You just want God to bless what you have decided. You want God's help. You don't want his input. You want to form an alliance with the king of Egypt. To fight on your behalf the kings of Aram and Ephraim. You're like a mouse asking one cat to fight another cat. And you forget that it is in the nature of all cats to devour the mouse. You will be devoured. Every earthly security will eventually fail us. King, have you forgotten your faith? Have you forgotten your stories of faith? I used to teach them to you when you were a boy. Do you remember the story of Elisha? How he and his servant awoke one morning, stepped out of their tent, and saw surrounding them on the hillsides the armies of Aram, The same armies that threatened to surround you. The servant panicked, but not Elisha. Do you remember? Remember what Elisha said? Those who are with us are greater than those who are with them. And then he prayed. Lord, open the eyes of my servant. And when the servant looked up again, he saw the armies of Aram, but now he could see above them the chariots of fire, the angel armies of God. Do you remember? Do you remember that story? I used to teach it to you when you would sit on my knee. Well, now, O king, it's time for your story. What will be told? Mark my words, you are indeed surrounded. But you are surrounded by more than the armies of your enemies. You are surrounded by the angel armies of God. If you will but trust So you refuse to ask for a sign, and the Lord God says he's going to give you one anyway. Look. The young woman is with child, and she will bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Before he eats curds and honey, before he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings whom you fear and dread will be destroyed. It will happen that quickly. That's right. Your wife bears 
your sign. The child within her will be a boy. He will be the heir to your throne. He will rule in might and majesty. He will welcome God's justice and God's favor. And because of his rule, people will dwell in peace. They will live in their own homes with safety. They shall eat from their produce, drink wine from their vineyards. The Lord of hosts will do this. For the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The people who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. And every warrior's boot that has marched in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be burned. It will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. His reign will continue to increase. His rule will continue to build because it is a rule that welcomes God's favor. Even when the evil of the world appears to prosper, when all around us seems conspired against the ways of God, his rule will continue. And we will seek it if we look for it. Your job, king, is to prepare his way. It is to make ready his coming. To take all that is rough and make it smooth. Take everything that is crooked in our world and straighten it out. This is your job to prepare, to repent, to quit running around in foolish turning, looking for a worldly solution to your godly problems, but to trust in the Lord, for he will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on him, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. O king, keep walking. Keep walking with God. It is not easy, but we depend on you to keep walking. Our faith, our faith is never for us alone. Others depend on our faithfulness. Others need us to be faithful. And others need you, O King. Our nation needs you. Future generations need you. For that is what I see too. I see the future. I see many generations from now. Another child who will come. And I see that rain being made possible in his life. I see it. I see a day when the wolf shall lie down with the lamb. I see a day when the calf 
and the lions shall eat straw together when people shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks and a little child shall lead them. I see the day of his appearing. He will not come in majesty. He will not come in a palace. He will come in a forgotten place where people are not looking for him, but he will come as one of them and be raised up and people will see in him this possibility of God. So let us make ready. Let us make ready and turn. I see it and I cannot unsee it. Oh, king, sleep, sleep, and dream.